Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. And before we get into the reaction, it's time for random questions with you and me. Today's question, question number six, is what is the best Wi-Fi name you've ever seen? For me, it would be, and it's, it's a Wi-Fi that I can pick up here in my flat, it is Leon Killer because what the heck? What is that supposed to mean? Is it the person who killed Leon? Like he's like famous and he's like proud that that's what he accomplished? Or is this just a guy named Leon who happens to also be a killer? Just some kind of, you know, murderer living next door to me or above me perhaps? Your friendly neighborhood serial killer? <laughs> or third interpretation, maybe it's like Leon killer. Like that guy's a real killer. He kills it. He does a good job at life and things. So, leave a comment below, what is the best Wi-Fi name you've ever seen? And, 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 before we get into the reaction, one more thing. You see this? Have you ever seen such a cool thing before? This little beauty here is the impossible card. It doesn't make any sense when you look at it, because how is that friggin' possible? And if you want to know the answer of how that could possibly be, you're in luck because I made a tutorial on my Patreon telling you exactly how to make one yourself. And it's pretty easy. There's no glue. All you need is one card and some scissors. Go to Google and type Jason Parker Patreon. It's easy to find. You'll make this cool little puzzle in no time. And at the same time, you could learn from me this cool move. Or how about that one? Anyways, they're all on there. You can learn them from me and help support the channel at the same time. And in today's episode, we're looking at Xavier Mortimer, a French magician who's appearing on season seven, this is the last episode 13 of Fool Us, or is it the last episode? Hmm. Normally they have 13 episodes, but who knows? 2020 is bringing lots of unexpected things. But yeah, probably that will be the last episode for this season. Or will it? Yeah, probably so. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Xavier's performance and see what he's got in store for us. Five years ago, Full Us was my first American TV show and people still come up and say it's where they first heard of me. I have my own theater in Las Vegas now. It's a lot more work. But when it's yours, the sky is the limit creatively. For me, magic doesn't mean anything without a story. I always start with the question, if I had real magical power, what would I do with them? Sometimes I can be the victim even of my magic. Things happen and it's out of hand. The trick I'm doing tonight, I had the magic in my head right away. Then it took me two years to figure out the story. That's how important storytelling is to me. The effect I will rely on me in my performance would fool most people. And maybe Penn and Teller. We'll see. Here we go. Welcome fellow Vegas headliner, Xavier! <laughs> Jay Lozada, anyone? Magicians know what I'm talking about. What's going on here? Was he making like a tie? Like a makeshift tie? Wow, that was fast. That was really good. Huh, I don't see how he got rid of the tape so quickly. Wow, also very magical. Actually, both of those productions, or appearances, whatever you want to call them, were very fast and very like, pa, 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 very sharp and fast. I mean, they basically looked like magic, right? The tie thing, I don't know, I, I'd have to look again, but I can imagine somehow the tie could appear maybe from his collar, I'm not sure. I just saw it the once. But getting rid of the tape so quickly is the more perplexing part to me upon my first view. I'm not gonna watch it again right now, but just giving you my initial thoughts. And when he made that pocket square appear, like, I mean, I'm guessing maybe he was palming it there, but it just looked like it just popped into existence, you know? So while it may not be entirely fooling if we know how it was done, still his execution is amazing. It's easy to say, oh yeah, yeah, he just palmed it. But it's another thing to make it look like it's just boom, like magic, right? Or 
Maybe he just wanted us to think he was palming it, and maybe he did it an entirely different way. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Pocket square gate. Palming or no palming? Anyways, I'm enjoying his act so far. It's very entertaining, very charming, obviously. He's got panache. What does panache mean exactly? Pretty sure I'm using it correctly. Define panache. Flamboyant confidence of style or manner. Yeah, he's got panache. Anyways, it looks like he's about to invite Allison onto the stage with him, so let's keep going. A little closer, please. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the balloons behind him, that's kind of... Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me give you my thoughts real quick before we hear from Penn and Teller and before they get into the questions. So that's obviously a very beautiful and fun act. Xavier did a great job. It's very entertaining watching him with his facial expressions. And uh, yeah, I guess the first kind of things he was doing were just for fun, just for making the whole story and routine. I'm guessing the main effect was that red balloon, right? How it was floating up and down. My first thought would be like a string, like a string tied to it going up into the rafters. But I don't know on Fool Us what the rules are with that. If like they're allowed to have a guy like up there, just kind of hanging around up there near the lights with the... <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed. So, I mean, that's that was one of my first thoughts. Like, Teller did a routine where he had a red ball and he was kind of animating it around on the stage. And so I was thinking that might be a similar kind of method here. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he couldn't do that. Balloon gate. Strings or no strings? Leave a comment below. My other thought was maybe that string he's holding has some kind of like... You know, like a... Just a... Okay, so that's no explanation at all. <laughs> I'm just suspecting things now. It was a string in the air. It was a string in his hand. It was uh, some string somewhere else. String gate. Balloon or no balloon? Clearly I'm out of ideas. Maybe we should just hear what Penn and Teller have to say. That's so lovely. Thank you. I didn't know I was going to be part of a love story tonight. Yes. <laughs> that's magic is about uh, life and love is about life, so I like to tell these things with my magic. Aww. Do you um, always do magic with everyday objects? Yes, I rarely put boxes on stage or uh, take cards unless there's a specific uh, occasion for that. But yes, I play with the shadows, with light, with, with the mirror, with things like that. You know, that's, uh, that's the magic I like. That's what inspires me and that's what I want to transmit. Yeah, Very well, cool. that's cool, because then the next time somebody sees whatever object you use, they think of you. That's, that's a good point. You know, next time yeah. I see a red balloon, I'm going to think of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> next time someone All sees... Right. Let's see if our love story ends with a trophy. Pen, tell her. Well, Xavier, we've known you for years. You're part of our uh, family, one of the siblings of magic here. And you've always got new ideas, and they're a little different, and we never see hack stuff out of you. We never see you do anything other people have done. It's just a fabulous thing. Now, I want to say, Xavier, I was watching this routine carefully with you. You hold hands with Allison and the balloon goes up and then she spurns you a little bit and the balloon goes back down. I may be a little dense, but is that a metaphor for something? <laughs> is there some sort of yes. allegory there yes. that, I, that I'm missing? There seemed like an up and down thing and I, I guess I'm just dense. Well, we want to tell you that the way you started out, uh, we know those things, but let's throw the art aside, all the, all the French cleverness, 
all the beauty. We're throwing that out, and we're getting down to the hardcore stuff, which is <laughs> how do you make that balloon go up and down? That's the question. How do you make the balloon go up and down? We don't care how cute you are. We just care about how you made that balloon go up and down. And Teller and I sat down, and we talked it back and forth. We talked about neutral buoyancy. We talked about how you could move that up and down at will. And what we came up with was we have no idea whatsoever. You have fooled us. Beautifully done. We have a yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now let me go ahead and give you my closing thoughts. Well, I guess the method must not have been at all what Teller had used to float his red ball before. I remember he performed it before on Fool Us at the end of the episode, because if it was the same method, then he would have known how Xavier had done it. So that kind of removes strings from my string gate theory. Now we're just left with balloon gate. All right, I'm not sure what he was talking about neutral density. Is that what he said? Neutral density? Anyways, I guess he's talking about some scientific or technical way to make the balloon change its altitude. Okay, okay, I should say first, it was a beautiful routine and a very nice performance by Xavier, and congratulations on winning the Foolish Trophy. Secondly, if I could try to think how he did that effect, I've got two theories that just came to me right now. One, there's a very tiny, inside of the balloon, there's a very tiny little man who's operating it like a hot air balloon, just kind of, you know, running the gas and turning it on and off, just kind of navigating the winds inside the theater. That's just my first theory. I've got another one. Theory number two is that he has a very small drone inside of the balloon that he's just flying, you know, maybe controlling with his toes inside of his shoe. Never mind the fact that the propellers inside the balloon couldn't displace air outside of the balloon. Never mind that. I don't need to be bothered with science and stuff like this. Clearly, that's how he accomplished the magic. And, uh, hmm. Any other theories? Hmm. I mean, just to get crazy, I know. <laughs> Maybe he had like a fan behind him that protruded from the back of his jacket and would just like blow the balloon up. No, unreliable. One thing I was thinking is that string tied to the balloon, you know, when the balloon popped, he kind of like carefully wrapped it up around his hand and then like stuck it into his pocket. And actually, I think if I remember correctly, he had the string around his hand for the majority of the period while, while Penn and Teller was trying to guess his method. And I wonder, if that wasn't a red herring, to try to get them to suspect the string he was holding, because he still has it there, you know? I'm thinking maybe that wasn't the method at all, and it was just, like, uh, something to catch them. In fact, apparently, you know, this dialogue at the end of the act can be quite edited for time for the show. I wonder if they made a guess at that string at all, or anything like that. Anyways. What did you think about Xavier's performance? Please leave a comment below. I thought it was a very fun, imaginative act, and it definitely put a smile on my face. And speaking of faces... Now it's time for an Aesop's Fable, where we can learn a little bit about this world we live in. Some little piece of wisdom for you to improve your life. What do we got here? Okay, this one looks cool. Chapter 100, The Ox and the Frog. There's a nice little drawing there for you to observe. Alrighty, The Ox and the Frog. Two little frogs were playing about at the edge of a pool when an ox came down to the water to drink, and by accident trod on one of them and crushed the life out of him. When the old frog missed him, she asked his brother where he was. He is dead, mother, said the little frog. An enormous big creature with four legs came to our pool this morning and trampled him down in the mud. Enormous, was he? Was he as big as this? said the frog, puffing herself out to look as big as possible. Oh yes, much bigger, was the answer. The frog puffed herself out still more. Was he as big as this? she said. Oh yes, yes, mother, much bigger, said the little frog. And yet again she puffed and puffed herself out till she was almost as round as a ball. As big as, she begun, and then she burst. <laughs> Aesop is having a little fun with us this time, I see. I'm feeling at the moment like this is a primarily entertaining story. Um, okay, of course I'm gonna look into it and see if there's something we can learn from this, but... That just made me laugh. So it seems like the story is not so much focused on the ox like smashing one of the frogs and killing him as much as it is with this recounting of the story and this dialogue between the mother frog and the brother frog. It seems like that's the key part, just about the fact that <laughs> they're trying to like, ah, oh, this big? 
even bigger, this big, even bigger, this big, and then just, she also dies. They both died, so there is a connection there. Some kind of connection! Um, and at least to me, it's kind of one of those things where you kind of sense that might be the direction where things are going, so there's like a little bit of anticipation just before you get to the end. Maybe it's just supposed to be ironic because she was talking about her son's death, and as she discussed his death, she died. Maybe she was trying to make her point that she could be as big as the creature the sun frog was describing. She was trying to be bigger than life herself. She was trying to measure up to this story of the gigantic creature. Or I kind of feel like it's maybe that she just got too carried away and lost sight of safety. About being safe and doing reasonable things. She was so focused on this one thing that she lost sight of her own safety. Yeah. I guess that could be the lesson. There aren't any expressions jumping to mind right now, but I could say awareness. Keep your awareness of the entire situation that you're in. Don't become so fixated on one pinpoint of a concept that you lose track of everything else. You don't need to be paranoid, but of course you should be cautious and aware of your environment and aware of your own self. If you're doing something that hurts, stop. You gotta care for your body. You only get one of yourself. All right, okay, so I'm doing my best job trying to make some wisdom out of this story. Leave a comment below. Do you have a better interpretation or do you think this story was more just entertaining? I like the way, sometimes I like the way the author writes. It's like written in such a matter of fact way when some death occurs that it just sounds terrible and shocking. Two little frogs were playing about at the edge of a pool when an ox came down to the water to drink and by accident trod on one of them and crushed the life out of him. <laughs> just an average day. At any rate. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for watching this with me. Thanks for listening to my telling of this fable. Remember, if you wanna learn how to easily make this little puzzle yourself, make an impossible card, you can do so on my Patreon. I made a video tutorial there explaining exactly how to do this. Okay, and uh, thank you for considering my Patreon and for considering supporting this channel. We got two disappearances in this video. Can you believe it? By the way, I filmed an interview with another magician and that video is coming soon. I made a lot of progress editing it last night. Make sure to subscribe and smash notifications all so you don't miss when that comes out. The key thing is the all. Notifications some, that's like eh. Notifications all, that's like and in summary, thank you guys for being here. Hope you're having a wonderful week. Hope you are embracing the coming of the winter and the cooler weather and everything's going well in your life and I will see you next time. What? Why?